it now. I was a bit off track for a while here and there. Not exactly know who I was. Now I think I know. Anime love stories can start to feel very stale after a while. The typical anime story of two teenagers falling in love is one of the most common tropes in the medium. This leads to a lot of romance anime feeling like it's more focused on obtaining a romantic partner than developing a relationship. This is because most anime fans are teenagers or young adults who are wanting to get a romantic partner, and those are the kind of stories they can relate to. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing though. In fact, crafting a story for your target demographic makes a lot of sense. The issue with this is that oftentimes in anime, we never really get to see much development for the intimate relationship that the main couple of the show share. So much of the show is focused on obtaining this relationship in the first place. In most shows, you never really get to see what happens after the couple have sealed the deal and decided to go steady. This type of getting the girl story has existed in fiction for a long time because of its inherent relatability. Most humans strive for love and affection, and writing about the journey to obtaining that is compelling because there's a clear narrative that you can explore, and the concept is ripe with possibility. This is why even non-romance action blockbuster movies tend to have some kind of romantic subplot thrust into them. The Marvel films are a great example of this, having romance plots unnecessarily placed in the story where they aren't really needed. Like in Captain America Civil War for example, where Captain America hooks up with his dead girlfriend's niece. That happened for some reason. This is why I find romance stories that actually develop and display their relationship well past its infancy to be compelling. We get to see actual development of the relationship once the courting stage, so to speak, of the relationship is over. This leads to a story about a relationship that's more meaningful and inspiring to me personally, as we actually get to see it fleshed out more. This is why the anime I can't understand what my husband is saying is so great to me. The show follows the life of Hajime, who is a male otaku who makes a living being an anime blogger, and Kaoru, who is an average office working woman. The couple are married and watching them go through their day to day lives is very funny and heartwarming. Kaoru is often confused at what her husband is talking about when he references something from otaku culture, but she still loves and accepts him even if she doesn't understand his hobbies. We see Hajime and Kaoru enjoy each other's company, bicker, laugh, and love each other. Each episode is three minutes long, so you get short bursts of cute slice of life comedy mixed with genuine emotion and heart. The story is so refreshing and fun to me as it shows a functional relationship between an actual couple. The show blends comedy and romance between these two in a very fun way. I feel like there's more room for this type of story in anime and in storytelling in general. I think this type of story is much harder to pull off though than the classic boy tries to get girl story we see so much. It's much harder to write a slice of life romance because it takes more effort to create an entertaining scenario out of the romance itself than it is to write about the path to falling in love. Writing about the path to falling in love is more relatable to a wider audience. This is because teenagers and young kids who have never really had a romantic partner can relate to these stories because they may be in the same situation as the character who's trying to find love. Adults who are married or are in a long-term relationship can also relate because they remember when they were in that situation. Another reason why we don't see a lot of genuine feeling romance stories in anime is because a lot of anime serves as wish fulfillment, particularly for a male teenage audience. This is why we see a lot of harem shows where the main character is completely average, but still gets a lot of beautiful women for no real reason. The male audience of these harem shows wishes they could be in that same scenario as the main character. This teenage wish fulfillment type of character extends beyond romance stories. It extends to action stories also. This type of character is called a Mary Sue. A Mary Sue is a character who is essentially a self-insert character for the author of the story oftentimes. These type of characters have no real reason why they should have the powers or the special abilities that they have other than the fact that they're the main character. For example, in Sword Art Online, Kirito is a complete Mary Sue who just is strong and powerful because he's the main character. Another example of this is in the new Star Wars trilogy. Rey, she's just another complete Mary Sue character. She just can kind of use the force for no reason. This type of character can ruin immersion, especially in romance stories, as the main character often gets attention from the opposite sex for no reason at all. It feels undeserved and unrealistic. It's not always a bad type of character and can be done well. However, we see this type of character dominate so many stories, especially in light novel adaptations of anime. I think what I would like to see is more anime that properly builds up its characters and establishes meaningful relationships. 
This could make the story more compelling and interesting to me than just the typical falling in love type of story. Well, that's all for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content. I'll see you in the next one.